Hello and welcome along to part two of this F1 Manager 2022 save with me, Daniel. We are back with Williams Racing for the first full race of the season. We are at the Bahrain Grand Prix, having got through qualifying and our early days in the job last time out. So if you missed episode one, it's up in the eye above. Please do give it a try if you haven't already, as we are back here to take part in the race. And for those of you that were here last time, you'll know we're on the back row of the grid. So if you're looking forward to seeing if we can progress through the field or whether we're going to be stuck to a lonely race at the back, then please do chuck a thumbs up on it and subscribe for regular content. Links to all of our FM22 saves up in the eye above and everything else down in the description below. But we're being told, look at the bottom of the screen. It is time for the main event. So let's go straight into it, the Bahrain Grand Prix. A chance for us to get some early points under our belt might be a little bit ambitious in dry weather. But let's stay focused and push hard. It's the race weekend. Let's continue. 57 laps. Hopefully we'll complete them. It's good weather. There's two cars that are at the back of the grid. Haven't got a huge amount of quality. Albon did show some glimpses in qualifying. And maybe we went out slightly early for the second run. But we're going to try and go for a, a relatively conservative strategy. Because if we go aggressive... Look, we're not quick enough, so we might as well just try and reduce the stops and hold on that way. Maybe cause some traffic behind us, one driver benefiting the other, I don't know. We've got to get in front of cars to worry about that. So each driver will need to make at least one pit stop to fit new tyres. On average, a pit stop will cost about 25 seconds. So strategy, planning and off strategy. Let's have a look. We've got a set of tyre strategy for our drivers now. We need to make sure we have a good plan of when we want the cars to pit. Right, how do we go about this? Select strategy. Every race weekend, the team will prepare some recommended strategies to choose from. Let's see what they suggest for this race. Strategy A is a fast but risky option, relying on two soft stints and no hard compound at all. No, 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 we're far more cautious than this. Strategy B is a well-balanced option, two soft stints and a nice long middle stint on the hard compound. And strategy C is a slower but safe option for this track. We'll tackle the final stint on the medium instead of the soft. So that's an interesting one. There's no one-stop strategy here. So we're going to have to go to, do we go for the balanced one or do we go for the conservative one? I think we're going to go, with Latifi we'll just try and get to the end. We're going to go for maybe the cautious one, just try and hold people up. And then for Albon, we'll go for the balanced one because he's a little quicker. So two stints on the soft might help him. I'm going to go strategy C for Latifi. Going safe for your first race isn't a bad idea. We're always going safe. Safety first. Select a strategy for the other driver. It doesn't have to be the same. No problem. So let's go back. Let's go to Albon. Let's assign him a strategy. And his is going to be the more balanced one. So it's already telling us to pick a different strategy, which we were going to do. Avoid cars pitting on the same lap, which is also important. But Albon, two stints on the softs. He's got a real chance. I don't want to delete that by accident. We want to select it. Strategy B, let's head back and prepare for the race. That's the big decision made. Compounds we know about. Car parts are locked. Cars set up, they've got confidence. Fuel is the only thing. So, like, do we want to load them a little bit heavier? I think they're at the maximum at the minute anyway. We've got race commands to direct drivers on how they should approach cornering. Will affect lap times, tyre wear and risk of accident. I'm going to keep that unbalanced for the first. We've got to judge where we are before we try and make changes. And unfortunately, while we've got a weak car, that's the best time to do it. So I can't imagine this being a particularly pleasant race, but we're going to go and get into it nonetheless. Our hope is basically safety cars. Can we then take advantage of a pit stop timing? I don't know, because otherwise I don't see how we get off the bottom couple of rows. Let's head over to the Grand Prix into Bahrain. This is massive, and of course, it's the first experience of a race for us and all the decisions we're going to get to make in there. Do we choose to not have them fight? Latifi not fighting his teammate? I feel the first weekend I should just let them go, but probably not the best idea throughout the season. Here we go. Five lights. Away we go. We can barely see our cars at the back as we're off. Now let's see what we've got to manage. Cars at the back of the grid don't look like they're at risk of catching anyone here. We'll play the start through for the first sort of half a lap at a slower pace. Can we overtake anyone early doors? I don't think so at this rate. Although Albon's having a go around the outside of someone. 
bit strange that the car's almost stopped there, to be honest. It does look like he's got ahead of someone. Does Albon. He does. Position gained. Well done. He's passed Lance Stroll. Not been a particularly popular driver choice uh, for many creators at the start, I can see. Oh, look, we can watch the replay of the overtake. Let's see that. So he's going around the outside, and he's got the inside line for turn two. Ah, oh, textbook stuff. Absolutely brilliant from Albon. Really good start from him. If we can get a better partner later down the line, I feel Albon can be a superstar for this team. Latifi, I feel, has been a bit hard done by in this game, to be honest. There you go. Really exciting. But I don't think you should be celebrating that much for us going up to 18th place. So we've got all the information about the pit stops, the car conditions, and I'm presuming we'll get the pause if there's any big events that pop up. I think once you go past two, you can't actually watch the track. I don't think there's anything we've really got to do at the moment. So we're just waiting for a big event to come up. I'm keeping an eye on Albon. As we get a pop-up at the minute, during the race itself, you can direct the team drivers in three ways. Each option will help them increase their speed, but come at a cost in different areas. So increased pace will help lap times, but we want to stay balanced. It's the first race. We just want to try and get to the end because that is important. Uh, you can adjust the ERS strategies for each driver. Not going to do that yet either. We're going to stick balance for now. So we're going to get through this as quickly as possible while there's not much happening at the back. And we're now back to say that DRS is enabled in the third lap. So if we're coming back for that, we know any big events are now going to be shown. So we can go back up to 16 pace now. I wouldn't expect there to be too much change after. Albon is now back down to 19th. Stroll has passed him. And we have got the slowest cars on the grid. So we have to expect that. Although Albon is now back ahead of Stroll. So it looks like we're pretty level pegging between those two drivers. Uh, as the race progresses, remember to keep an eye on your planned strategy you put in place. The strategy will let you check your strategy, adjust it, or even change it entirely. No problems at the moment, apart from the fact that Latifi is a mile behind at the back. Albon up to 18th again overtaking Stroll. I think we won't watch until he gets a bit more exciting and goes further forward. As he is closing in, or was closing in on Mick Schumacher, he's now just behind Vettel. But Latifi, look how far behind he is. I think we're going to have to replace him at some point, aren't we? Latifi is seven and a half seconds behind. And I know we're doing a slightly more conservative strategy with him, but still, you wouldn't expect it to be that bad, would you? But it's an instant free race at the moment. 20 cars running. No issues. And we're flying through to the first pit stop, which should be any minute now. Right, we're on to lap 13. That was the first pit stop, so we should have it. This should be Albon coming in. Uh, drivers entered the pit window. The pit window encompasses the laps that cover the planned pit stops in your strategy. This means it's nearly tied to call the planned pit stop. Unless you think there's a reason to pit immediately, I'd recommend sticking to the strategy and pitting on the optimal lap. So how do I call him? Pit window is active. So do we call him to pit or will it happen automatically if we don't do it? How are his softs looking at the moment? I mean, at 54%, we could maybe get another lap out of the softs before we go. I mean, we're watching the Latifi at the back at the moment, which is just pointless. I think we're going to leave it for one more lap, and then we'll box him. Because the longer he does on the soft and the shorter on the hards, the better for us, I think. So, uh, tyres are getting a little warm. Okay, maybe you're telling us yourself. Tyres slightly overheating, confirmed by the pit engineer. So, pit options. Let's talk dry races. All cars need at least two different tyre compounds. But we've got the strategy already. So there should just be an option to stay as normal, shouldn't there? So the planned is the hards. So that's what we're going to go for there. The compound is what you plan to change to in your active strategy. Excellent. So pit this lap. I think we're done. Everyone's happy with that. So let's just skip ahead to time 16 again now. Pit window is active for Latifi. We've been brought back for that the following lap. So let's go and have a look at what we can do with Latifi. Still getting used to the controls a little bit. Let's arrange the pits. He was going on to the hard tyre as well, I think, wasn't he? He was. Hard tyre for Latifi. A slightly shorter stint and then he'll go on to the medium. So that pit stop is going to be arranged. I mean, he's essentially... A passenger in this race, isn't he? He's in last place. He's just dawdling around the field. 
and he's got absolutely nothing to offer for the rest of it. So we're going to go back to time 16 and we'll return if there's any news. Well, the interesting thing is we did come in earlier than a lot of the others. Stroll's locked up before the pit stop. Vettel's away behind, but he's come out the pits ahead, I think. So it's only really the battle between Albon and Stroll that's going to stop us finishing in the bottom row completely. No race incidents of note, no crashes. This is a very quiet one. Latifi's a mile behind. We've got a yellow flag in sector one. I locked up there, says Alex Albon. Oh, what did you do? Does that mean Stroll's back ahead? We can't afford mistakes from Albon. They're not happy in the garage. I mean, it's a slight overreaction to a little knock-up, but he's not out, is he? No, he's all right. He's just behind Stroll now. Careful of running wide. So there's no issues with that. We'll just crack on as normal now. Does mean we're back to the back row of the grid. Albon's made the mistake. And Stroll's obviously now got a healthy advantage of three and a half seconds. It's going to be quite hard to catch up. And the last thing Albon wants on the hard tyres that he's got to do a long stint on is to wear them out early with lockups. It's been a really uneventful race. There's nobody at all getting involved in instances. So at the moment, we're just sitting here waiting for the next pit stop because there's not a great deal we can do. We're learning that Latifi's not going to be quick enough in the long term and that we're probably going to have to replace him and get in a top number one driver alongside Albon. But we must be coming up now. We're past the halfway point in the race and there's absolutely nothing. It's been a very quiet, boring one so far. Uh, the leaders have now lapped both of our cars. That's the only event of note. Well, we're coming up to the second pit window and Albon is starting to catch Stroll. If he goes on the softs at the end, he might, he might have a little chance. So we're just waiting for Latifi to come into the pit window, which is now active. We might as well stick to the planned strategy at this stage. So Latifi is going to come in and box for mediums. He's basically just running to finish the race at this point. Without a number of crashes, he's not going to get anywhere near. We could do with some wet weather as well, maybe for him. So pit options, we're going to go to the mediums, which is what he'd planned. And we're going to box this lap for him. And then we've got a little while to go before Albon. So let's skip ahead. Latifi is in the pits. Albon is still within two seconds of stroll. Maybe we've got to think about him coming in soon. He's going to do about four or five more laps on those tyres. He's above Vettel now, who's obviously had another one. We've got a Latifi one saying this is the optimal pit stop lap. So we're going to ignore that because he's already come in, hasn't he? He doesn't need to box again. So he came in during the pit window. I don't really understand that. We're going over to Albon now. He's having an okay race at the moment. Vettel's behind and he's going to go on to those quicker tyres at the end, don't forget. So we're going to get through a little bit more first. Latifi is just basically dodging people at the minute. So having a look at Albon, his hard tyres are at 38%. So I think we've probably got to think about the pit stop now. Going into lap 44, if he pits then, that will be his 13 laps at the end. So soft tyres, there it is, the new compound, 100% on the softs. Pit this lap. Come on, Alex, get us a couple of positions late on. He's above Vettel and Stroll. But he's obviously about to box and go back down to 19th. It's then whether he can make up the four and a half seconds on Stroll. But if anything, he's going backwards at the moment. Getting further away. Staying four and a half seconds. So the tyres haven't really proved an advantage late on. But there is a clear difference between our two drivers. With 10 laps to go, we're just going to wait patiently. And we're going to hope that Albon can deliver here. Albon's getting further back. How is Stroll getting further ahead of him there? Uh, let's see what the other race views are while we're here. So from the data view, we can see live data from the current session. We don't need to worry about the standings because we're going to be right at the back. This might be a better one to view on at the minute. Because if we look at the lap times, oh, I mean, he's going the slowest at the moment, Albon. And on the other side, we've got the strategy view, which is where we can change. But... This has been a, a very chastening experience to see how far we've got to go. Albon is down to two and a half seconds. Can he catch him in time? There's two laps left. He's closing to Stroll. Come on. Two laps to go. You've got to do it. 
Albon, oh, he's made a mistake. He's got further away. And on the final lap, it looks like Albon is not going to make it. He's just behind Stroll there. Look how close he is. He's going for it. Come on. Let's go for pace. Final lap. He's close. The tyre condition's fine. The fuel's fine. We're going to go aggressive. Final lap of the race. This is the opportunity. He's got ahead and now he's got to stay there. The fuel's all right. Everything else is fine. So he should. We put him up to attack now as well, just so he doesn't get overtaken. This is going to be a massive, massive finish. He's ahead of Stroll. This is the final lap. Does he hold on? Oh, to the line. And he's back behind again. He's got to go for it. This is going to be nip and tuck all the way. We're going to adjust the RS for the last lap. We're going to go for overtake. And hopefully we can find a way around. He's going for the move down the inside here. Excellent stuff. He gets ahead. Now he can go to defensive mode. We're having to do some actual management in the last lap here. I can't see how he wins this on the last straight. Max Verstappen has won. Leclerc behind him. But this is all about Alex Albon. We are basically worrying about whether we can finish 18th rather than 19th. That's what the fight is for here. And I don't know that we're going to be able to cling on here. Because Stroll is right up our backside. Albon's raced very well. He's nearly, what, 30 seconds ahead of Latifi. But can he deliver? The back straight is going to be so hard to hold on here. With DRS as well, you'd imagine that Stroll's going to get through. Here goes Albon. He's got about four tenths at the minute. Is it going to be enough? If anything, the gap's getting wider. We might have enough to hold on here. Albon's coming through. And at the very least, we've not finished as an entire back row of the grid. One position for Albon. He gets above Stroll. That's a pretty good effort. Latifi is miles off. We're going to have to replace him. But Albon, he's doing his bit at the minute. 18th place and 20th. I think a lot of you have said with Williams you've had the same. An okay performance for Albon in 18th place. Finishes the race, which both of them do. That's important. But nice to see towards the end that we were able to use some of the race features and not just get stuck in a dawdling battle at the back. So nice to see him beat in Stroll, but there's a lot of work to do. And that's what we're going to have to push forward and do in the future. Verstappen wins. He's on the podium with the two Ferraris behind if we go further down, all the way to the bottom, you'll then see what we had. Albon made up a place, did really well. Latifi a mile behind. Maybe we need to look for a second driver. So we're now getting the post-race stuff. So the team's drivers and staff gain experience over each race weekend. Depends on their performance, but with enough experience, they can improve their skills. Okay, so Albon got a lot more than Latifi, as you'd expect. And he does seem to have a bigger ceiling. Uh, nothing for the reserve driver, which we wouldn't expect. He didn't take part. So let's continue to there. Finances, no bonuses. Uh, nothing extra from the sponsors. Didn't finish 10th or higher. So absolutely no chance they were getting anything there. Let's continue through the end of the weekend. Is that it? Or is there anything else to follow? We'll see what's in the inbox and that. Then we'll plan when it's going to be back. So we're being congratulated for completing the first weekend. And thankfully, we did get there. We did manage to get to the end, but we've got to finish ninth or above, and we were a clear tenth there. We need Lance Stroll to stay at Aston Martin, and we need to improve. Let's see what we can do before the next race weekend, including emails from the engineering team. So let's have a look at those. I've updated our circuits data based on the Bahrain Grand Prix. Our strategic information is up to date. The telemetry shows that the top speed of car one could be better compared to the grid. We should design a new car part to improve this attribute and keep us competitive. Okay. Well, let's do that. How do we get on with it? Is it going to give us a little bit of an indicator? Otherwise, I don't really know what to do. Car parts we can design and manufacture in-house. 
each car part impacts different areas of a car's performance. You can also view the rank on grid. This is a useful comparison tool, but I think we know where we are at the minute. Take a look at the different car parts. Right, new design project. I was hoping it was going to give us a bit more of a clue, to be honest, as to where the speed's going to come from. I could do with a bit more guidance here as to what we need to do. The team's expertise in making new car parts improves with experience, so each design is likely to be better than the older one. Just to make sure, check the new design against the one currently installed. Okay. Testing is important. Our testing time is limited. It's up to you to decide how to commit to each project. I'll assign some testing time to the design now. You can see what effect it will have on the car park. Once you've taken a look, let's continue. Okay. So new design project. It's going to improve things. We've got no problem with that. And it does up the speed very, very slightly. But more importantly, it's better at low speed. It's better cornering at medium speeds. We've got to be happy with it. The engine cooling's improved too. So let's get the design focus. You can direct the engineering team to focus on specific areas. We'll understand more later in the year, of course. Do we want it to be balanced? Optimize cooling or race performance? I think balanced is fine. So we're going to leave it for now. And we can decide how many engineers are going to work on it. So I think we'll do one normal, 100,000 to be spent. Let's see what improvement it makes. Time to completion, 30 days. So we should see it in a few races time. But we've done it. Our first car part is being designed. We can go to the calendar to see when it's going to be ready. Not yet is the simple answer to that. So uninstalled car parts are stored in the warehouse, including our newly manufactured suspension. We might be able to use it to improve one of our car setups. Let's go and have a look. Isn't the warehouse wonderful? Not hugely, to be honest. Let's see what we can do. They've just finished manufacturing a suspension of a brand new design. A well-designed suspension is crucial to the aerodynamic potential of a car. We always want the best car parts possible, so it's worth checking to see if we should install this one. Well, I'd like to hope it's going to be better. All the available suspension designs are here to look through. Both cars currently have the same one. Check the new design, as each car can only have one suspension fitted. You want to check the stats of the design, okay. Take the time to compare the two. This design has positive impacts only, that's what we want to hear. We only have one copy at the moment. I was going to say, are we going to have to decide which one to install it on? I think we have to give Albon the priority, don't we? Because he is the man who's going to make the difference for us. So this is the new one, and we're going to install it on car two, which is Alex Albon's. If you want more copies of this design manufactured, you can do so from here. Just remember the spending caps. I would like them to manufacture another one because it seems to be a big improvement, doesn't it? So we'll ask them to manufacture that. And again, it's 50,000. We're putting a lot more money into things at the moment. But it looks like we're going to improve. And my God, do we need it after what we saw last time. So back to the menu we go. Let's get to the inbox and finish off our items there. Our staff and facilities have a significant impact. When you get the chance, you should check these areas out on your own. We've done our first bit elsewhere. We've had a difficult race, according to Patrick Stafford. It was below expectation, and we know that we have bad races, but we need a return to form soon. Interesting. So we got the email about the suspension, which if we'd seen in order, we would have known previously. And there's a post-race overview, which we're not too worried about. So if we go and have a look at the calendar, it is back-to-back -back weekends to start the season. Alex Albon has got a new suspension part, and we will be back next week for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix in Jeddah. Hopefully you'll come and join me for that. It will be the next episode. We're not going to worry about the stuff in between. We'll just be there for qualifying and for the race. If you did enjoy this one, our first race weekend, and a pretty disappointing first race, then please do put a thumbs up on it. How long do I give Latifi before looking elsewhere? Or should I just go straight to it? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And how are you getting on in your F1 manager careers? Subscribe down below to stay up to date with new episodes from this, as well as daily FM22 videos as well. I'll put all the key links above my head now, as well as the link tree in the description for links to every possible platform. But thank you very much for watching yet again. I hope you're enjoying the new game as much as me. Fingers crossed next time, when we come back for Saudi Arabia, we'll be able to have a slightly better race day. I'll see you there to find out.